Hello and welcome back to Dual Charge Gaming and in today's tutorial part two of how to create a multi-base for use within Kings of War I'll be explaining how I create the ice effect. So I'll briefly outline the paints that I use for this technique. So generally to begin with I start with the Games Workshop Ice Blue. Now I'm not sure if you can still get this paint um, from Games Workshop stores or online but that's the one that I use and um, it's almost run out so I may have to change or look for an alternative paint in that tone. Um, if you don't have this paint anything of a similar tone will be fine. Um, for Valio paint users um, I found that the sky blue paint uh, is a good, also a good base in colour. It's a little bit lighter than the uh, Games Workshop Ice Blue but I found that also to be a great paint to use for a base. It doesn't really matter anyway because in, for the second step we'll be going over the entire area that's been based in blue with the uh, with a blue wash. Um, I personally use the Games Workshop blue glaze, but if you have any navy wash ink or glaze, then that will also that'll be fine. Okay, so I just start covering the area in the base paint. Now I've applied the paint to the majority of the area, I just want to take this opportunity to talk about the mixing palette that I use. Um, I personally use a wet palette. It's a technique that I started using about two years ago. Before that I used a tile or a plate, uh, but this is a wet palette and I found it significantly improved my painting. Now it's how it sounds. Um, it's a layer of sponge on the base and I've cut this fit into a Tupperware tub, any size would do. And above that is a layer of kitchen towel, or piece of kitchen towel folded up, and then tracing paper over the top. If you fill the, the sponge before applying the kitchen towel on top with water, so it's almost to the top level of the Tupperware tub, then put the kitchen towel on top. Now press the kitchen towel down slightly so it absorbs uh, the water. Then lay the piece of tracing paper over the top, and then I turn the tracing paper over and then press it down again slightly so that the surface where you'll be mixing the paint is wet. Now I found that uh, it's great because it waters down your paint for you. Now I found that with painting generally less is more and with the paint being watered down slightly it helps with the transitions of uh, gradients of colour and also it helps keeping the paint uh, wet for a longer period of time and I found that generally with mixing colours on a palette, particularly with a dry palette, it uh, dries out after a couple of minutes. With a wet palette it, it will last for hours and if, I've heard that if you put the palette in the fridge as well then it could last for up to 12 hours. Okay so now I'll just continue finishing off the last bits of the painting. Now the base layer is complete, we can start applying the wash. Now it's great to get into the nooks and crannies you may have missed because painting cork can be quite difficult to get into those areas. And also it darkens the first layer so we can then apply that same colour over the top of the glaze once it's dried to create that light source effect. I personally use the Games Workshop blue glaze but any navy blue ink wash or glaze from any range will be fine. So I'll start applying that now. Okay, so the wash has now been applied. You don't have to wait for it to dry completely. Sometimes I find that if it's a little bit wet, it does actually create a nice effect and transition of colours. But now we're going to start applying the light effect. Again, I use the Games Workshop Ice Blue colour, uh, but as long as it's the same colour you use when, for the first layer, then that's fine as long as it's the same. So now we need to start 
with deciding on a light source. I'm choosing this point here and, and this is the direction that the light will be coming in from to create that light effect. And then I apply a watered down but generous amount of paint to the brush and just flick the paintbrush from the direction of the light source and away from it using thick to thin strokes trying to leave a thin layer or thin edge from the point which is furthest away from the light source like so. And for the edges of the cork all I do is just sweep the brush across the edge. Um, don't have to worry about how much paint's on the brush for the first couple of layers, just so you can catch the raised areas of the cork. Okay, now the first layer of highlights is complete, it's time to mix together a lighter tone of blue for the second layer of highlights. Now if you're just using two paints, uh, straight blue and white, then mix together 75% of the original blue colour that you used with 25% of white. If however you're using three tones like I am, <clears throat> I'm now going to just use the Valio Sky Blue as that's the technique that I'm used to using, but as the aforementioned technique will be absolutely fine. So using the same technique as before, but not going quite as far as the previous strokes, start applying the next layer up. Now when the second layer of highlighting is complete, it's at this point that I start to add a thin layer to the edges of the cork. Just to show where the ice is broken and the light source is just catching the edges like so. And that's the second layer of highlights complete. And that's the process that I follow, just using shorter brush strokes on each layer of highlights, changing the ratio of paint blue to white in 25% increments. So the next layer will be 50% blue, 50% white. The following layer will be 75% white, 25% blue, and then finally just white, just to touch up the edges. So I'll show you that now in high speed, and then I'll just show you the touch-ups that I apply at the end. And that's the painting finished. And all I do now to finish off is apply a layer of Ard Coat. Uh, Games Workshop Ard Coat is what I use, but you, if you don't have this, you can use a mixture of 50% water, 50% PVA glue to achieve the same result. So I'll just apply that layer now and it will be finished.
and that's how I paint the ice terrain for my multibases. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, and if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them below. And we'll see you in the next part of this tutorial for how to add snow effects and how to paint the rock terrain. Thank you for watching, we'll see you soon.